Hey everybody, it's Ms. Barnacle again. Our next section is talking about fractions and decimals, changing fractions to decimals. Um, and some of these are going to come out even, some of them aren't, so I'm fixing to show you how to deal with every example that I can find. Alright, so let's go to the board and do some problems. Okay, I've got four examples up here. and it, um, The first example is a regular fraction. It's called the proper fraction, remember, because the top number is smaller than the bottom. So what we want to do is change it to a decimal. Um, in order to change this to a decimal, it's very basic. You take the top number, he becomes your dividend. Your bottom number becomes the divisor. And 25 does not divide into 17, so obviously I need to do something about that. So I'm going to add a decimal point. And when I add a decimal point, I can add these zeros. These zeros stand for placeholders right now, but they're going to um, hold the place value so that I can put my quotient up there in the, my, um, when I do my division. So I say, does 25 divide into 17? Absolutely not. So there's my zero. Does 25 divide into 170? Well, if you think about 25 like a quarter, you kind of ask yourself how many quarters are in $1.70, or get close to $1.70 anyway. Um, and that would be, let's see, four quarters makes a dollar, eight quarters would make two dollars. So I need six because seven quarters would make $1.75. So I need six. Six quarters would make $1.50. So that's how I do that. And then I subtract. That would make 20. 20 is smaller than 25, so I'm good. I bring down my next zero. And I say, how many times does 25 go into 200? Well, that's quarters again. How many quarters are in $2? Eight of them. So that would be $2. Whoops. And when you subtract, there's nothing left. So 17 over 25 as a decimal is 68 hundredths. And it comes out exactly nice and even. Okay? So 17 over 25, 17 25ths, is 68 hundredths. Zero decimal point six eight. Okay? All right, so let's go to the next one over here, 2 and 17 twentieths. Now this 2 right here is a whole number, so we're going to leave him alone. We're going to leave it alone for now and we'll come back to it in a minute. The main thing that I care about is the fraction part, 17 over 20. So I'm going to do just what I did in the previous one and I'm going to divide. 20 goes on the outside, 17 goes on the inside, and I put my little decimal point, add me some zeros. Now, I always add two just because, but you can add one as you go. It doesn't really matter. So 20 does not divide into 17, so I stick a zero. 20 does divide into 170 eight times. That would make 160, and then you subtract. So that gives me 10, and then I bring down my next zero. 20 divides into 100 five times, and that would make 100. And that comes out even. Isn't that nice? So I have 85 hundredths as that answer. Now, now I come back to the little 2 out there. And so since I had the whole number 2, I want to rewrite this as 2 and 85 hundredths. So leave the whole number alone. And then when you're done dividing your decimal part, bring the whole number back. Okay, and stick it in front of the decimal. All right, so now that you've done that, I'm going to use some extra space down here. I'm going to erase some of this. I'll rewrite the answer over here. This is 0 decimal 6, 8. Okay, so now I'm going to divide. I have 6 fifths. All right, that's an improper fraction. And if it's an improper fraction, that should kind of give you a hint 
as to what your answer is going to look like. Your answer is probably going to look something like 2 and 17 20ths when we changed it. Um, so let's do dividing and see what happens. 5 does divide into 6, where in the other ones it didn't. One time, and that leaves 1. Bring down the 0. 5 divides into 10 two times, which makes 10. And I didn't need another 0, so see, if I don't need him, I just take him away. So that divided out evenly, and look what happened. I have a whole number in front of my decimal. And anytime you have an improper fraction, that's what you're going to wind up with. Okay? So it's 1 and 2 tenths. Then we're with this one, 5 twelfths. So I'm going to rewrite it so that um, I have a little bit more room. So when I do this division, 12 goes on the outside, 5 goes on the inside. Add your little decimal point and some zeros. And then we're going to start doing division. Does 12 divide into 5? No. Does 12 divide into 50? Well, yeah, it does. It goes in there four times. That's 48. Do my subtraction, and that gives me 2, right? Bring down the next 0. Does 12 go into 20? Of course it does. It goes in there one time, which makes 12. When I subtract this time, I get 8 left over, and I'm not done. Okay? It didn't come out even, so I'm going to fix it, and I'm going to keep dividing. And since I'm going to keep dividing, I'm going to add some more zeros back here. And then I'm going to bring the next zero down. And 12 divides into 80 how many times? That would be 6. 6 goes in there 70. 6 times 12 is 72. And when I subtract, guess what I get? 8 again. And when I bring the next zero down, I get 80. And then what's going to happen is 12 goes into 86 times again. And that's 72. And if I were to subtract that again, I would get another 8. And if you will notice, after these first two digits, starting with the third one, if I erase this 100 so that you can see this, the sixes are going to start repeating over and over and over again, which means this is called a repeating decimal, okay? So when you're going to do this one, you would write as the answer 0 decimal point 416, and you would put a little bar over the 6. That is a repeater bar, meaning that one digit repeats over and over and over again, okay? So 5 twelfths is 416 thousandths repeating, okay? That's how you write that down and that's how you say that. Now, there's another thing that we do and that is putting these in order. What if you have fractions and decimals and you need to line them up? Okay, I'm going to erase this so that we can do another problem. All right, we have 9 over 20, we have 456 thousandths, we have 4 ninths, and we have 4 tenths. And what we have to do is we have to put these in order. It says from the smallest to the largest, because sometimes we like to line our numbers up by um, smallest to largest with value. So that's what we're fixing to do. And the easiest way to do that is to change every one of these into decimals, okay? So let's write down what we've got already as decimals. We already have 0 decimal point 456, okay? That's 456 thousandths. We've got that. And we've got 0 decimal point 4, which is 4 tenths. We've got that. So we've got two numbers that we have to turn into um, decimals before we can finish this. So let's come over here to the other side, and we're going to divide. We have 20 on the bottom, 9 on the top, 
And like we did on the previous problems, we're just going to add some zeros and start doing division. 20 does not divide into 9, but it does divide into 90. It goes in there four times, and that makes 80. And we subtract, and that leaves me 100, bringing down that zero, right? 20 divides into 100 five times, and that does come out even. So now we've changed that decimal, or that fraction, so I can cross him off. He is now 0 decimal 45, that is 45 hundredths, okay? And we have one left to change, 4 ninths, so let's change that one. So that would be 9 on the inside, I lied, 9 on the outside, 4 on the inside, add some zeros and start dividing. 9 does not divide into 4, so that's 0. 9 divides into 40 four times. That makes 36. Subtract. That gives me 4 left over. Bring down a 0. 9 divides into 40 four times. That's 36. Subtract. That leaves me 4. If I were to add another 0, it would keep repeating 4s. Okay? So this is 0 and 4 tenths, right? And it's repeating. So, when I write my answer, I'm going to put a repeater bar over my 4. Alright, so now that we've done all four of them, we've changed them all to decimals, now we're going to put these in order. Now, um, when we put some other numbers in order, we wanted to make sure that they had the same number of digits behind the decimals, so let's make sure that we have that. Okay. We have four, five, six. He's got one, two, three digits behind the decimal. That's 456 thousandths. We have 45 hundredths. One, two. I need one more so that he has the same number. Down here I have four tenths. I need two more so that they have three. This one, I need two more behind there, but it's a repeater bar, so you don't just put zeros, you put fours. Okay, because it repeats, that's the number that you put behind there when you add. Now you want to put them in order. So which one is the smallest? They all four have a zero in front, so we can't deal with that. They all four have a four in front. Okay, so that's all four, four in the tenths place. Can't look at that. So my next one is look at the hundredths place. I got a five, a five, a four, and a zero. Well, this one is the smallest. Okay, so he's number one. Four tenths is the smallest. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line through him. Now I'll look at the next one. I had a five, a five, and a four. Okay, so my repeating decimal, zero and four tenths repeating. That one comes next. And then I'll look at my last two. I have to go to the third place, which gives me a zero here, so that's next. So that's 45 hundredths, and then the last one would be 456 thousandths, all right? So when you're putting them in order, number one, turn your fractions to decimals. Number two, make sure they have the same number of digits behind the decimal, and then put them in order from smallest to largest, okay? So that's all we have for this lesson, and I will see you back for another one soon.